Hi, I'm Josh Schlossberg, host of the Green Root Podcast, the official podcast of Eco Integrity Alliance, eco integrityalliance.org, where we're on a quest to uncover the roots of the modern ecological crisis. This episode, we've got Matt Peters. Matt Peters is a member of the Heartwood Coordinating Council and is organizing this year's Heartwood Forest Council event in Southeast Ohio from May 24th to 27th. He lives in Pittsburgh, where he's been active with the neighboring neighborhood community gardens and with helping protect the city's urban forests in the Mon River Valley. Welcome to the Green Root Podcast, Matt. Thank you, Josh. Hello. Good to be here. Glad to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to have you, Matt. And I've been talking for a little while about stuff. And Matt is in the forest right now. So before we get into anything else, how about you tell us about where you are, where you're living, what's going on out there? Oh, glad to. My goodness. It's what a day. This is uh, early February, and it was just such a nice day. I thought it would be great to come outside. And so I'm standing in my backyard. I'm, I'm about 100 yards from my house, uh, and I'm in the Hazelwood Greenway. Uh, Hazelwood is a neighborhood in Pittsburgh where, you know, the steel industry once rained it was it was where the mills were and surrounding it is hundreds of acres of forest just on this side of the river and on the other side of the river i'm going to point my uh camera the other way there and there we are looking down on hazelwood itself the neighborhood you can see the houses and the mr rogers and all and across the river is called Hayes woods and that is the city's newest park. It's a huge, huge that park property alone is is uh, 600, estimates vary, but almost 700 acres. Combined on both sides of the river, I'm standing right in the middle of 5,000 acres of contiguous urban forest. Just a huge green space in Pittsburgh. Uh, and Hazelwood, you know, is booming, you know, after 40 years of abandonment by the steel industry, Hazelwood is starting to rebuild and, and you know, companies are beginning to reinvest. There's a whole digital and robotics revolution going on. Uh, it's really a fascinating place to live. You know, there's just like a, every city, it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. So. Excellent. Uh, Thank you for showing us that. That's that's exciting. Yeah, I don't know much about that particular part of the country per se. And you think of industrial steel, you definitely don't think of all of those forests. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. I call it the hole in the donut. That hill across the river and even where I'm standing, there were mines just burrowed right into the hillside. And at this layer, they, they dug out the coal and right below it, they dug out the limestone and, and below that uh, was was the iron. And it was all right here. And that's why Pittsburgh is here. They just literally slid it on a ramp down to the riverside and loaded it on a barge and moved it up and down the river to wherever it needed to go. You know, they had the coke mills over there. They had the rolling mills here. They had the finishing, you know, the manufacturing different things was another part of it you know it's like this gigantic landscape scale assembly line that was the american industrial revolution the steel industry you know andrew carnegie all the way up to world war ii uh oh well all the way up to 1984 when they packed up and moved <laughs> left left this neighborhood high and dry and um so it is a fascinating time to be here. I've, I've been a resident of Hazelwood now about 12 years um, and watched the 1100 acre Superfund site where the, the mills used to be uh, was, it looked like a big meadow. You could mow it for hay. <laughs> I actually thought about growing straw and building straw bale houses. Now there's a, there's a housing revolution for you. Right. Um, but uh now that is, um, there's a lot of Department of Defense robotics going in there. You know, Uber, the famous company Uber. Actually, if I reverse the camera again, I don't know if you can see through the trees. That's the that's Uber's 
proving grounds. That's their research and development um, zone. They've got about seven or eight acres. They've built like a mock city and they test robotic cars. Uh, and you turn just down, down, I don't know if you can see through the trees, there's the downtown skyline. That's the point. That's the three rivers where the Allegheny meet, meets the Monongahela and becomes the mighty Ohio. Excellent. That's super cool. Yeah. So the Green Room podcast has become a bit too West centric, probably because I live out in Colorado now, but I'm from the East. Yeah. I'm from New York State. I lived in Vermont for probably half of my life. So I'm glad we're representing so what's going on out there so what's wow. the forest like there what are the tree species oak and maple or what's what's the deal out there no well i'm in the i'm at the northern tip of of the the what the oh boy uh where to begin with that one the eastern hardwood forest is you know there's all kinds of stuff i'm in appalachia so this forest in its natural state yes would be a uh, oaks maples 120 co-dominant species in the canopy out west, what is it, five or six, you know, spruce fir, you know, very different ecosystem. But here, here where I'm standing at the moment, I'm surrounded by a very young forest. I can look at, I can show you photos from the 50s, probably up to the 70s, where this, these hills were absolutely bare. There were no trees because of the pollution. And it has sprouted up in, a, you know, a pretty robust canopy of black cherry and and um black locust uh a little bit of honey locust they're, they're very spiny oh my gosh let me show you this tree look how i don't know if you can see that one in the background there's these very spiny locust trees um and they're fixing nitrogen you know like a gigantic bean um here's a real nice big uh relic cherry that got really big it looks like a stump sprout so that that organism you know is could be centuries old, even though these trees are as fat as they are at best, but 80 years, you know, is, but most of the trees you can see are small. You can see there's virtually no understory. That's a problem with the deer um, as much as invasive species. This was, when I moved here, this was a uh, um, honeysuckle bush. Korean bush honeysuckle dominated the understory. And I dug that out, it took me a couple years, you know, there's a there's a pile of it in the background over there, <laughs> um, but I unleashed the next wave of invasive species, and that is this Japanese stilt grass. And you can see it; it's like a golden colored or light colored straw on the ground, and that is Japanese stilt grass. And um, we're going to get into a conversation, I think, about forests and fire, but uh, you know some of the really devastating wildfires out out west one of the factors driving those is this invasive grass that that could catch and light very easily eastern forests are different you know western climate is drier and 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 these forests out here you know are designed more to hold water and store water and cycle water so i'm hoping because there's my house right down there you know um that uh I, I you know but um i think i've gotten off topic what was the question again josh <laughs> oh no you're just telling me about the forest there and the invasives that is that is a, a crucial issue of course the plants are different so i wasn't even aware of the honeysuckle stuff i wasn't aware of the stilt grass but it sounds like you're you're managing that pretty well and letting the the forest recover as best it can so that's really great about well just a few years ago uh just recently hazelwoods forests won an award won an international recognition for the uh you remember the un climate conference in glasgow scotland as it happened hazelwood initiative the organization here um uh you know a citizens advocacy sort of membership group um a young woman named Tiffany had started a project with goats and had gotten brought together uh, Tree Pittsburgh, which is a really big organization here in the city that they do a lot of 
uh, they work with the city on every on, on all the urban forest issues, everything from street trees to all these greenways. <clears throat> and another group called Land Force, which is training young people to. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to misrepresent their mission, but something like jobs in the outdoors. You know, they do a lot of building of trails. They spent summers here doing the same thing, clearing back the bush honeysuckle up on the ridgetop, uh, starting with some areas that were really badly dominated, that, that, that the forest has completely failed to regenerate because the invasives have, have such a foothold. And through rotating goats, through rotating mechanical controls like scything it down or mowing it down and then uh they they covered the area with a really uh tightly spaced tree planting planted six or eight foot saplings on a on a six foot spacing a very dense uh to and the idea was that these trees would grow quickly shade out one of the most troublesome invasive plants there is and that's the japanese knotweed um that that just owns acres of our forests out here so they really tackled that head on uh the international you know they somehow we got recognized and uh placed among the the dozen finalists uh for the work that we're doing in our forests to make sure that they're healthy and in a good position to absorb climate carbon and mitigate climate change that's so awesome. Well, that's that's great to hear, and congratulations on that. Yeah, see, like, when you hear forest management, you think, oh, the timber industry going in there and cutting out all the trees, that's what they call management. No, but you're actually doing the real stuff. You're dealing with the invasives, and, of course, we all know that the logging is what brings in invasives, or at least one of the things that does. So that's great. That's really great, and thanks for showing us around and explaining some it's, of that history. It's a great place to live. There's some wonderful people here doing really great work. Super cool. Well, speaking of great work, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role in Heartwood, what Heartwood's all about, what sort of work you've been doing in the history? Heartwood, yeah. Um, so Heartwood is people helping people protect the places they love. Uh, it started in, uh, it was, they say it was born on a winter night in, in 1990. Uh, friends around the kitchen table, you know, and conceived of the need for a, a, uh, a grassroots network of um, people who lived in and near national forests in, in America's heartland, uh, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, and um, um, well, really Western Kentucky is, is what's right below there, land between the lakes. And they recognized that no matter what state you're living in, we're all dealing with the same U.S. Forest Service that is mismanaging our forests. You know that is that is um, you know the Department of Agriculture. You know they're 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 providing timber for the timber industry. You know prior o over um, other management values, recreation, habitat, carbon sequestration, you name it, um, and. Uh, so that's that's how Hartwood began. Is is that network? It has grown over the years to include a network of not just people focused on national forests, but people on our national energy policy, which is one of has some of the biggest impacts on our forests. Whether it's mountaintop removal, coal mining, whether it's the fracking boom that has not only gobbled up um, uh, national forest lands for pipelines, but also America's farmland. You know, farmers are selling out and moving out, so we're losing these valuable earth resources to a, a short-sighted uh, fossil fuel industry that is killing the planet. <laughs> what was the question again? Whatever you want to say about Hartwood. Yeah, I mean, Hartwood, that's, Hartwood. That's, that's pretty good. So Hartwood meets- there. Yeah. <laughs> you got me going, this is fun. Um, so Hartwood meets once a year, I'm sorry. Hartwood meets twice a year, uh, once in the spring and once in the fall. We meet every year in May over the Memorial Day weekend at the end of the month. Uh, and we meet in a different place in the region. Um, last year, we were in uh, central Indiana at a church camp, you know, um, 
uh, this year we're coming to Southeast Ohio, uh, where we're going to, um, we're going to be at the headquarters of the United Plant Savers in Meigs County. It's, it's a, a nearby little town is Rutland, Ohio. And the United Plant Savers, this is really great. They have, I don't know how many acres, it's more than, more than 300 acres. They might own 600 acres of land and 300 is, is, is part of a, a sanctuary you know, a designated sanctuary for medicinal understory plants. Appalachia is the source of the world's best ginseng. And that ginseng is valuable in traditional Chinese medicine. Part of the value of ginseng comes from the wild character of, of the root, the, the life that it lived in a natural forest. And that's, that's part of the chi of, of the medicine. And Appalachia has that in a way that China, which is also a place in the world where ginseng is naturally found, uh, does not simply because they've their civilization is five thousand years old and ours is two hundred fifty. Pick <laughs> you know, uh, less than five hundred years of, of 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 colonization, right? So, very different um, expressions in the plant for those who are tuned into that, you know, so that is, that is part of the dynamic there. That's part of the work that they do. You know, they feature the medicinal herbs, um, research and, and advocacy for their restoration opportunities for private landowners. Um, and they may also have insights for ways that our national forest could be managed. Wouldn't it be interesting to, I, I've talked about this for our urban forests, you know, Pittsburgh, when the steel industry collapsed, rebuilt itself on, they call it meds and eds, education and hospitals, universities and hospitals. And what if we partnered with these medical institutions to research the medical properties of Golden Seal, um, cure for the common COVID, whatever, you know, something in the natural environment that is good for what ails us, whatever it may be. Um, thousands of native plants in the Appalachian region, you know, many of which have traditional and modern uh, med medical applications. This place is amazing. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And obviously Appalachia has a rich cultural and natural history. And obviously a lot of the forests were cut in the past, but they're, they're regenerating, they're recovering. They're starting to become if not officially old growth yet mature and soon, right? I mean, if old growth, it's a it's a random definition, but say that starts at 80, 100, 120. I mean, we're getting on that pretty soon, right? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we're in the middle of a process where the Biden administration is taking action to protect old growth and mature forests. I think the comment period just closed a few days ago, and and that's there will be another opportunity, I believe, this summer for for the public to get involved with you know, uh, speaking out to, to protect old and mature forests on public land. And I think that's a really important question. We, if you look at, let's go back to Kentucky and land between the lakes. Here's a huge area of very old, very old forest um, that recently had a tornado. Natural process, right? And this forest is now, you know, there are large areas that were blown down by this tornado if the forest service would leave them alone which they are not they're they're going in and logging that area under the guise of emergency salvage but had they left that material on the ground let the ecosystem continue through its natural process and that raises i, I raise this up to to say well an old growth forest doesn't necessarily mean trees older than george washington you know um we have to recognize that protecting forests of any age is essential to our survival as a civilization. We have got to bring the carbon down, and this is the only thing that works. Everything else is is an investment experiment. <laughs> got it. No, that's uh, very well said. Very well said. Yeah. And so that that addresses, you know, when, when you talk about mature forests and future old growth, I mean, every forest is future old growth, right? So where do you draw those lines? And those are political lines and those are going to be market forces. You know, those are the, the, the invisible hand of the market is, is what's going to draw those lines. 
unless it's pretty arbitrary. Yeah, out here, out here in Colorado, where I was pushing against this quote wildfire fuel reduction logging that's not backed in science or common sense, and they were actually cutting some of the largest trees, which you know, out here in parts of Colorado, 100 something, 100, well, I counted this 129 year old tree, which is pretty thick. Colorado, they don't grow really fat because of the, you know, it's hard for climate up higher and, and, and it's dry, et cetera. And, you know, cold, hard winters, but uh, they were debating the local, the county open space about the age of old growth. And then they even went so far as to say, well, you know, really comparatively speaking, you know, the, the oldest, if they can grow up to, you know, 400 years old, so it's not really old growth, it's like they're just making stuff up. So yeah, maybe we shouldn't play into their game as much. And whatever the age of the forest is, uh, it's, it's irrelevant. And I think what the problem with a lot of the management is, of course, is that they get in there and they never leave. So if they're only going to be protecting the older forests, they're just going to commandeer all the other ones. So they're managed forever. And uh, that's part wow, of the yeah. ploy. Yeah. So the rest become sacrifice zones and, and never have a chance to become a forest again. Or Well, that's what I appreciate about Hardwood. Hardwood has been a staunch supporter of genuine forest protection for decades. When I first started in 2000, mid 2000s 2005 or something like that i was aware of uh you know the work that folks were doing and the staunch advocacy is is really lacking there are definitely some great folks in the environmental and forest protection movement but it it's the minority that that are really holding the line and so hardwood has been been doing that and, and so many of the folks who are working on this are out west so it's super important to have people in the heartland and east coast eastern area appalachia working on this stuff so yeah we yeah. we can't thank you enough uh but this to the heartwood forest council so the this one is may 24th to 27th in ohio i'm looking at the tentative brochure but um what what generally goes on there and then maybe i'll i'll point out a couple of things on the brochure maybe you could speak to but what what happens yeah. at a heartwood forest council good this event is a time for the movement to get together and just talk, talk about our visions, talk about our struggles, talk about the strategies and, and, and what we're going to do next. This is the time when, you know, um, and this, the, the structure of these events follows a, a, a fairly, um, well, follows a pattern, you know, every Friday, it begins on a Friday opening. We have some kind of, welcome to the place you know here's where we are might be a biologist talking about you know the native fish found in the creeks or something unique about that place southeast ohio there's going to be a lot to talk about and and um and the um uh and then there's a the band yeah we uh, uh, our events are fun you know we, we're activists who work hard all year and we get together and we want to have a good time you know so we get together we learn something about the place we dance upon it, right? Saturday morning, um, we have our traditional morning circle. Everybody sits in a great big circle. Hello, where are you from? Quick, what are you working on? And everybody gets a chance to meet everybody else and say, aha, you know, they're working on something I've been thinking about or whatever. We break for lunch. The food at Heartwood is a very important part of the experience. You know, we serve the most climate friendly bio representative um food that that feeds the soul as well as the body you know so after lunch the uh <laughs> we usually have the breakout workshops in the spring we have a little bit more of a formalized structure you know we have some speakers and facilitators but really it's a time for those for you to connect with those folks aha you know that person across the circle who was working on the same thing you all need to sit down and talk about your stuff so we'll have some uh workshop sessions in the afternoon saturday evening we usually have our featured keynote speaker now western forest enthusiasts i think will be very interested to know that our keynote speaker is dr chad hansen of the uh founder of the john muir project of the earth island institute one of the premier scientists in the field of forest ecology and particularly fire you know which is becoming 
a big issue. It's it's they talk about it on the weather on the on the evening news. You know, it's it's a part of our lives, no matter where you live. And um, this is again, you know, the 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 use and the misuse of of ecological management terms and even techniques by these federal agencies. You know, are they doing more damage than good? Uh, there's a there's a budget driven incentive to apply the same expensive, high risk you know uh, um, management, you know firefighting and and fire um, using you know uh, what's the word prescribed fire, um, you know it's good for their budgets. Congress loves to fund these things so. That is really what's driving the man, the forest management discussion at the agency level. And we need to get together and talk about how to effectively counter that. So there's a very important opportunity. And I love that we're also having this at the United Plant Savers, where we can really also dig into the ecology of the understory, because we spend a lot of time on the on the tree trunk. So this is just going to be a really yeah. great weekend. That's super cool. And yeah, so... Would you say that there's a theme this year around the wildfire as a way to kind of bring together parts of the movement? Absolutely. This um, this use of fire, you know, really speaks to a very important part of the, uh, the environmental movement, which is reconnecting and repairing relationships with indigenous peoples who science is now telling us, well, you know, the native cultures used fire, you know, so so we can, too. Um, so this valid is this cultural misrepresentation misappropriation you know these are these are deep issues these are important issues so uh i want this weekend to be an opportunity for some of that a place where that can take place um fire of course the theme of fire um we're meeting in southeast ohio this is this is coal country this is this is the place where um they're now fracking for gas you know they're the the, the ohio legislature just allowed fracking under state parks so you know these these companies are coming for our public lands they're using it to to burn the planet and continue you know drive make climate change worse so fire is very much a theme of 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 the whole conversation it's a time for all these movements to come together and work together that's that's super cool yeah well the issue of wildfire of course is not just uh and fire in general is not just a Western thing. And I predict that if they keep getting away with all the logging they're doing out here in the West, you all are going to see a lot more of it on the East. And in fact, I've already seen it proposed in places like New Jersey that they have to log because of possible fire stuff. So it's coming. We're the proven grounds out here, but it's coming for you all. And that's really cool that you're also, you know, you're going to be talking a little bit about some of the fracking stuff, all the stuff that's going on on public lands and you know, private forests, all that, that matters. I, I'm looking at the, the program right now. I just mentioned a couple of things. This is a tentative program, so it may or may not, but I, I see talking about American chestnut fiasco concerns with keeping genetically engineered trees out of the forest. That's an interesting topic, huh? That's a big one. Um, the uh, Global Justice Ecology Project has had a campaign for many years battling, you know, to keep genetic modifications and, and you know, doing field plantings, you know, planting 100 acres as an experiment. Uh, so there's some they've uh, got some exciting news. I, I guess I'll let them talk more about that let's cut it sure. earlier no, but that's a, that's a good teaser though so a little bit about or urban forests here that also there's a mention of the stop cop city folks down in uh i believe that's in georgia area Atlanta, and georgia. right and so that's that's a historically black community it's also there's an urban forest there and so they want to the police want to build a large sort of militarized training area and this it's not gotten as much attention as the previous elements of the Black Lives Matter movement, but that's still going on. And there, you know, there's been some uh, strange stuff been going on there. But that'll be interesting to hear about some of that that urban forest because that's kind of where a civil rights issue or social justice issue meets an environmental issue. So that's really important. 
it's really important. The, 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 the militarization of our police is such a problem uh, on its own. And of course, this, uh, this flashpoint where, where the militarization of our civil society is is directly conflicting with ecological you know they're they're clearing hundreds of acres of forest and they shot a protester in order uh, in the during a, a raid just a year ago right at the end of january a young young fellow named tortuguita i think that's probably the first time i've said his name out loud but you know he his body was riddled by 57 bullets obviously our police need a, a completely different line of training. If that's what they're trained to do, to respond to a kid sitting on the ground with his hands, you know, cross-legged on the ground, then obviously these police need training in conflict resolution, in de-escalation, in being decent human beings, whatever. Uh, so, you know, something is, is really deeply wrong. And it is really important, just like dealing with climate change itself, many different movements are going to have to come together in order to address this crisis issue as well. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, well, that does sound like that's an intersection, a lot of important topics. So that's that's cool that that's on the agenda. I also see things like, all right, people, maybe they don't care about trees. All right, well, there's stuff, plastics campaign, there's stuff about hemp, there's stuff about... Uh, state politics with ballot initiatives, citizen democracy. So I see a bird walk, I see yoga, I see growing medicinal herbs. So yeah, even if forest stuff isn't your thing as much, it seems like you got stuff across the board, handcraft skills, archery, really cool stuff. That's the brainstorm list for sure. We are hoping to have some artists come and, and do some, you know, how to make cordage, how to make uh, you know, you mentioned hemp in the plastics industry. Southeast Ohio and the upper Ohio River Valley is now targeted by, yet, you know, by plastics. This is this is the second step. They're taking the gas out of the ground, fossil methane gas. And by a process called cracking, they crack the molecule and they make polyethylene. They make plastics. I... That obviously, you know, I'm sure many of your listeners agree that that's just crazy and are well aware that we can do this with hemp. That instead of sacrificing for for forests and farmland for pipelines and and wells and drilling wells and we could be uh, growing hemp, storing carbon that way, because, you know, hemp is even better than forests, I think, acre for acre as far as pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. Right. And you know, take the seed and use the oil from that to do whatever you want. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's also a food source, fiber. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. I'm glad to hear that all that is potentially included. And then I also see something that is super important, but but not addressed as much. And it's that activist mental health focus, sustainability in the movement, grief release, and memorial service. So that that's that sounds really great addressing the human component of you know pushing against things it, it can be isolating it can be sometimes depressing it can we can burn out so taking care of ourselves in that way yeah and this is the memorial day weekend you know we we want to make time hold space i think is the term to um remember our dead people who've, who've passed just natural or otherwise um, remember species that have been lost, you know, take a minute to really, um, I mean, my goodness, you know, our, our, uh, you know, we have an, an entire generation growing up in absolute despair that the life support systems of this planet are collapsing. You know, that is just a, a really unfamiliar kind of grief. And <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's, that's the big one. And so it seems like, yeah, Harvard Forest Council across the board, it's got all the pieces there. I'm excited about it. Eco Integrity Alliance is psyched to be a sponsor of Harvard Forest Council. So folks should get their butts out there. Memorial Day weekend, May 24th to 27th. If you're on the West Coast, you should still go over there. 
But if you don't want to, there's actually going to be something likely happening in California on the same weekend-ish. So wherever you are, there's something going on, but definitely go to Hartwood Forest Castle. They've been doing, this is the 32nd annual. So they know what they're doing. Matt knows what he's talking about. Matt, you got anything else you want to tell the listeners? Well, I, I did want to mention that that in addition uh, to all that, we're going to have a really fantastic youth program. Uh, one of the partners is called uh, Rising Appalachian Warriors, RAW, and they run basically a summer camp for kids in Athens County. Um, Athens is a, a, a very conscious community you know a lot of a lot of young entrepreneurs back to the land homesteaders many many cooperative land endeavors that have been around since the 70s you know the original hippie counterculture you know uh what back to the land communes and so they have of course that is going to play a lot into this particular gathering but that also means that there is going to be a lot of kids there and a lot of really sensitive and aware youths. And we are very excited to provide, you know, we always have some sort of way to at least let the parents, you know, participate in the workshops of the distraction of, of, you know, and give, give the kids something that, that is uh, rewarding and educational for them this year. We can really take that a step higher. So that's a very important part. And it's all going to culminate on Monday with some sort of action. And uh, a part of the fun will be coming up with what that expression actually is. But, you know, Hartwood, if, if we can get 100 or 150 people together, plus 50 or 60 kids, um, but we could we could really crash uh, uh, somebody's Memorial Day party or or what have you. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Um, so it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, I'm really glad to have the chance to, to talk about it. Well, folks, check it out, heartwood.org. Matt, thank you so much for coming on the Green Roof Podcast. A pleasure, Josh. Thank you very much.